Hey gentlemen, uh, yes, so it's Francis, uh, two weeks ago I did a clip, uh, in fact even before that I was running clips on uh, Ethereum, relative a weakness even to a shrinking crypto market cap, remember this is the second biggest coin uh, and we called for this to have a far greater sell off, um, at this point we we're calling it for it two weeks ago, um, to go below $400. Uh, and also I pointed out there will be a general crypto contraction, but Ethereum will um, overperform to the downside relative to Bitcoin in a crypto contraction. So uh, I've done a, a far more detailed clip for my premium guys, but I just thought I'd update uh, free view. Uh, here is Ethereum right now at 386 uh, and heading, and it certainly ran the target of our uh, structure that we had over here. Um, that's all this funnel to be run that was created on the upside. And in fact, you have um, HVF head and shoulders, which you'll learn all about on a program. Left shoulder here, exhaustive blow off complex second a late bull attempt which fails to make the highs and then you get the right shoulder over there both with structural patterns and both that have performed both to the upside on the blow off and remember we're interested in fast moving breakouts fast moves to targets with high uh, rewards with low risks stops at the red um, fast moves to the downside you've gone almost straight down you had a slight bounce off the upside funnel which we expected then you ran into heavy traffic here which was a key level of support there there and there on the way up and now that you've broken it support turns resistance and you carry on and you spill back down and in fact we have further downside targets of 280 and there is a small possibility of right the way down to 35 depending on what kind of a route this turns out to be but ethereum is underperformed and just take a quick flyby versus ethereum btc we made sure of our position on which was going to be the weaker you had an ethereum blow off here with overperformance, huge shooting star, big swing in value. When you get huge swings in value, you're getting close to um, clearly a top and volatility is returning. In other words, blow off up and then big blow off back down. So you're talking from 12% to a Bitcoin to back under 10 in a single couple of days. Very steep grind line there down this was inverted structure. You'll learn about that. As I say, if you do a program, go to the marketsniper.com, hit get started. And then you came down, you bounced off the funnel, but then you ran it and that was the end. Once you've run that upside, then it's going to be bear season grind line. You'll learn about that down, down, down. And everyone thinks, yeah, around the bottom, it's all up and gravy. Nope. Uh, I'm sorry. Grinding down, grinding down, little attempt to rally, then absolute weakest capitulation, continuation, etc., etc. Still getting taller wicks. Uh, on the upside of the candle showing selling coming down ethereum is getting pulverized against bitcoin which was our call and remember it's now barely five percent um looking like it'll dip under five when up top here it was at 12 and it's traded 15. um so ethereum is getting properly hammered but the big one is dollar because bitcoin of course is losing to the dollar it was 1425 now trading 386 we've got a target in the 200s we've spoken about it before we spoke about it when it was 800s deep into the 800s just sub 900s 870 850s that this is potentially inverted structure for a 400 amount that sounded absurd at the time um, it's no longer absurd it's run uh, 280 sounds um, not so absurd now that it's at 386 um, when we first announced it um, but who knows what we'll see but this is great structure and I've done a premium clip on this for my guys so just a quick heads up ethereum relative weakness remains and crypto contraction we mentioned the market cap we were around just under 400 when that uh, we were making some of those calls look at this route top 19 all bleeding bleeding it's been like this day in day out you had 277 we said you'd get back down into the 200s and there is scope even for the low 200s if ethereum keeps going down and bitcoin bleeds a little bit away which it's also doing it's not strong guys it's not strong gets down here you're going to be in the 250s 240s you start to be in the low 200s behind the 250 mark on your market caps especially with a number two that is bleeding out as badly uh, as oh god someone falling over the edge of a cliff um, has not been great for ripple 
and Bitcoin Cash. Oh my God. It's also being punished. Litecoin, Litecoin. Uh, the first one that is only double single digits here is EOS, which has had a few updates <coughs> and actually climbed a few points. Um, and that's it. Okay, uh, that's your update. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you. Um, we will be on the 12th of April. Um, recordings were sent out. So apologies, we didn't make uh, make it live for you tonight um, due to air travel. Um, but uh, glad to be back. Go to themarketsniper.com, simple website, and register there. You can find out more. There will be an offer for the serious people. Trading is not for everybody, particularly if you're long only mindset and you can't see the flip and you can't see the value in holding fiat value and gaining Bitcoin value in the bear markets when they occur, which they are certainly occurring right now, um, and also being able to make judicious and small shorts uh, that can work in your favor to accumulate both fiat and potential Bitcoin value in those kind of markets. You need to be able to flip when the market flips. These were both blow off moments. And the interesting fact is Ethereum, when did it start for Ethereum? I would argue the real blow off here, because we're sort of coming into November, many people point to the CME as being behind all of that. You saw that we had HVF breakouts here and we had an even bigger one for Ethereum right here where we called for this uh, 600 mark to be run on this setup when it was down in 300 and when overperformed set up again we called again then at the 740 for the 1100s that was the first time above a thousand for ethereum again overperformance but then it got a slap in the face trade and trend change moment and that came in and around roughly there that's when it started um, and that was 14th of Jan. So Ethereum ran a little longer before it got a proper slap. Where was Bitcoin slap in the face starting um, trend change moment? It was in and around December. So Bitcoin is the bellwether and it uh, illustrated. And as I speak, our Bitcoin is back under the 7,000 mark at 6,870. This is brutal, chaps. This is brutal. This is a bear market. If you're a hodler, you are bleeding out. You could bleed out for a lot longer. You always think, oh, but I'm late. I may as well hold on. It'll turn the minute I sell. False, false, and false. You have to be active on managing your money. Otherwise, you should just uh, just face up to the facts that you're going to go up and down with an extremely volatile market. If you're active and you have a method for being active, you will come out better. If you're a hodler and you bought up top here, somewhere in this melee up here, I'm afraid to say you would have lost from almost 20,000 back down to 6.8. You will have lost an unbelievable amount. You will have lost 67% of your money. Um, and some people were that late. Sure, if you got in before, you think, oh, well, it's not so bad for me. I got in down here. Well, I'm afraid it's still bad because whether you're losing profits or you're losing capital, everything counts as capital. Once you've earned something, you've only truly earned it when you've realized it. That is just potential profits when you're going up and you should be capitalizing profits at key moments. And that gives you a far greater stability and emotionality. It's not just about how well you win on the upsides. It's how much damage you avoid on the trend change. Many people just don't open their accounts and hope by ostrich strategy that the pain goes away if you don't watch and you're just going to turn into a hodler because you don't like what the market's doing. I'm afraid it's how active you are in the hard times and how much damage you avoid that actually does the most for your overall trading P&L because then you have a bigger account for the next swing and upside and then when you do a 3x or 4x over a period you're doing it on a far larger number and you haven't blown a hole in your ability to even play the next time and if you allow yourself to blow a hole you get into an emotionally negative environment you want to get back to where you where you were you put on too much leverage because your accounts now got too small and you then blow yourself up by being too early to the next alleged bull market please see the psychology and the mindset if you do not have method the psychology and the mindset goes hodling is not intelligent trading it is not even intelligent active investing that's my uh, <sighs> that's my sermon from the pulpit for you as traders uh, take it for what it's worth and uh, if you decide you wish to be serious about this um, 
contemplate investing in your growth and decide on a method. It doesn't have to be mine, but make sure it tells you at what level you should be getting in, what direction, where your stop is, where your take profit is, and you should always have higher rewards than you have in risk. And you should generally be trading with the trend and you should have a methodology to determine when a blow-off moment has occurred and a trend change event may have occurred um, because they do happen. They just don't happen as often as continuation. With that, uh, I love you and leave you and uh, enjoy your Easter weekends. Those that celebrate, uh, speak to you all soon.